From the Last Supper until now, a lot has happened. Jesus tells Peter about his upcoming denials. Jesus and his disciples go to the garden to pray. Jesus is arrested at that garden by Judas's help to the Jewish officials. Jesus is brought in to Caiaphas, the high priest, for questioning, and charged with blasphemy. Peter denies knowing Jesus three times. Caiaphas hands Jesus over to Pilate because the Jews did not have the authority to carry out such an execution, and it was Passover, and there was fear that people could riot. Judas's guilt and shame reared upon him, and he tried to give back the 30 pieces of silver, begging for forgiveness, which he ultimately threw on the ground, ran away, and hanged himself. And during all of this time, Jesus is now being questioned by Pilate, who can't seem to find the charges that are true, and offers to release Jesus, but the crowd denies it. So Pilate, with no other option, sentences Jesus to death by crucifixion. Our reading in the 27th chapter of Matthew. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and kneeled before him and mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of, the ro of his robe and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they came upon a man from some Syri named Simon. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. Then they sat down there and kept watch over him. Over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. The two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derived him, shaking their heads and saying, you who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes and the elders were mocking him saying, he saved others. He cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him now. If he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. About three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama shabbati, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed 
is last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple tore into two from bottom to top. The earth shook, the rocks were split, the tombs also were opened, and many bodies of saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, Truly, this man was God's son. Many women were also there, looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea, named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn from the rock. Then he rolled the giant stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. <clears throat> Today, all hope is lost. Grief fills our hearts as if it was the day 2,000 years ago. Were we there that day? No. Are we there right now? Are the mocking words echoing into our heads? Can you hear them? Throughout Jesus' ministry, he taught in great detail the extraordinary relationship between us and God. A bond that does not waver or break. He taught us about the reciprocating responses that only God can give the trust, the love, the promise. Each teaching brought with more love and more joy and most of all, hope. Hope that the ugliness in this world would fall and God's beauty would triumph. In a matter of 12-ish hours, Every ounce of this hope is ripped away. Each fiber of belonging, each thread of joy, each thought of love, gone, dead, destroyed. There is so much that is happening right in this moment. It is this Passover where there's 250,000 people in this little village that maybe had a 25 or 50,000 population. And on the side of this busy street are three wooden crosses, a thief on each side and Jesus in the middle. People walked past mocking the people Probably not necessarily that it was Jesus, but that it was the Roman culture, the Roman way of doing things, business as usual. I doubt for many, they even knew that it was Jesus on the cross at that moment, or who Jesus was. They had better places to be. There was a party going on. From noon to three o'clock, darkness fell on the land and Jesus hanged on the tree and said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? These words are fulfillment of the prophecies, the echoing of the scripture 
Jesus in this moment is in prayer. He is, he is bringing the connection of what has been said would happen to the reality of what is happening. From the words of King David to the prophet Isaiah, Jesus in these moments is fulfilling what we have been warned would need fulfillment. He is pierced with our sin, nailed with our pains, mocked by our distrust, and abandoned by our own ways. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is not a message to Jesus, from Jesus to God. This is not Jesus' doubt or fear. This is a message to all of us, to the people that were standing there watching, to us sitting here today. Let those who suffer eat and be full. Every part of the earth will remember and come back to the Lord. Future descendants will serve him. Generations to come will be told about my Lord. Jesus is the great Passover lamb. When God's wrath filled the Egyptians during the, during the exile, the saved houses were those with lamb's blood on the door. Jesus' blood took over all of our sin for God's wrath to pass over each of us. And in the exact moment of Jesus' last breath, the world shook. The temple curtain tore in two. Tombs of saints were open. The rocks split. With Jesus' last breath, God took over the ministry. The divided bands were broken. Jesus paid it all, never for us to experience God's wrath. Jesus' last breath, the earth quaked, the temple fell, and the world stopped. Truly this man is God's son. What have we done? Our next hymn is 117, O Sacred Head Now Wounded. <clears throat> 